Hey folks, my name is Ravish and welcome back to another video in the series of Terraform Bootcamp or Terraform for Beginners. In today's video, we're going to talk about a few Terraform terminologies that we are going to use in this video in this course as well. Okay, so before moving forward, I would like to request that kindly subscribe the channel because that would really support me to create more content like this. Alright, so let us dive right into the video and understand what are the ter Terraform terminologies we're going to talk about today. So the first one we're going to talk about today is a Terraform log file. If you remember in the previous video, there were a few files created. One of those were Terraform log file. So we're going to understand it, what exactly it is and why do we need it. The next thing we're going to talk about is Terraform TF state or Terraform state file. Why do we need Terraform state file? What does it represent? If we delete it, what happens? If it goes corrupt, what happens? We're going to talk about that. And the last thing we're going to talk about the backup file of Terraform state. Why do we need it? What's the need of having all these files in a setup and everything that revolves around it. All right. So without further ado, let us dive right into the demo. So if you can see on my screen right now, I've just removed access key and secret key from here for right now. But at the time of creation of the infrastructure, I'm going to add it. All right. So one file is terraform.log.hcl. Second is terraform.tf state and the third one is terraform.tf state backup. We're going to talk about that. All right. First of all, I would like to show you the content. So this is how it looks like in a state file. The content of a backup file must look something like this. And then we have our log.hcl. So the content it will look something like this. So this file is maintained automatically by terraform init manual edit may lost may be lost in future updates. Okay, so these are the three, fi three files. So let us understand why does uh, all this file appear in front of you and why do we need them? Okay, so we're going to understand what is Terraform log file. But before understanding it, I would like to show you a scenario. Consider a situation in which there is an infrastructure has to be created on AWS. All right, it could be an S3 bucket, it could be an EC2 instance, or it could be any database. All right, so these three are different entities in itself. Now there are multiple people inside a team, consider them as developer one, developer two, and developer three, and so on and so forth, developer in. Okay, all of them are trying to create infrastructure on any public cloud or any anywhere. But sometimes what happens, these folks are using same code base. And if this person will be having some different requirement and this person will be having some different requirement and this person will be having different requirement. This might clash and because of this clash, they can destroy the infrastructure and create the infrastructure in a way that might not be needed. To make it easier to understand, I will quote another scenario. Consider a situation in which there are two DevOps engineers in your team, D1 and D2. Okay. Now these folks are running a pipeline and this is the same pipeline that these folks are running. Now this pipeline includes a lot of steps, but out of those steps, there would be a step which will create the infrastructure and deploy something. Okay. But let's say the DevOps one is not exactly in hundred percent contact with DevOps two. The DevOps 2 will trigger the same pipeline. Now what will happen is if it will create the same infrastructure which was already into process and every time this pipeline creates and destroys the infrastructure, there would be an issue because something that is already created and it is not destroyed properly, that could lead to catastrophic results in the infrastructure. So because of that, we have a concept of let me scroll this of a log file. Now this log file will help you how I'll explain. So in order to understand is the terminology, it means that a Terraform log file is a file that helps to prevent multiple users or processes from simultaneously making changes to the same infrastructure. Now remember about the problem, which I just told above when Terraform is run, it creates a state file that tracks the current state of the infrastructure it manages. If multiple users or processes attempt to modify the infrastructure at the same time, it can cause conflicts and lead to unexpected behavior and that can go catastrophic. 
The lock file is used to prevent this by locking the state file during updates, preventing any other user or process then from modifying the infrastructure at the same time. This ensures that only one user or process can make changes to the infrastructure at any given time, preventing conflicts and ensuring that changes are applied in a controlled and a predictable ma manner. So basically, if there is one person and there is another person and there is another person over here, this person has started a pipeline which creates an S3 bucket and this person or a process, now consider this not as a person or a process, they will start acting on the same infrastructure which is under uh, creation or destroying or anything. This log file, what it will do is, it will cut down, I'll use this, it will cut down these ties or keep them in wait in order to make any changes to the existing stuff or something that is under creation. And that's why you need a log file. Now this log file won't let anything happen to the current infrastructure and nothing will happen to the infrastructure unless this P1 or process one or person one or process one let go of this infrastructure and then only process two or person two or process three or person three can take care of this infrastructure after that. And that does not happen in parallel that happens one by one. So again, I would like to repeat this log file. This log file is used to prevent this by locking the state file during updates, preventing any other user or process from modifying the infrastructure at the same time. So this infra won't be modified by two people at the same time. And that's the function of a log file. So I hope you have understood it. If you do not have understood, feel free to comment below. Now let's take the other topic, which is Terraform state file. Now let us understand the second part. Uh, if you want, you can watch this video in 1.5x, no problem. So we're going to talk about TF state file. Okay. Now consider this diagram. You have, this is your local. You have .tf files over here, which you will use to create infrastructure. At some point of time, you will do Terraform plan, right? And once you do it, there would be a state file that gets created. Once that state file gets created, it contains some information in that. And then it's going to create the infrastructure on any public cloud. We are using AWS over here. Okay. Now this state file will have the information of everything that is getting created on the AWS. So in order to understand this is basically Terraform state file is a file used by Terraform to store the current state of the infrastructure it manages. This file is automatically generated by Terraform when it runs and it used to keep track of the resources that Terraform is managing. So basically, if you have created 10 S3 buckets or 10 EC2 instances or any databases for that matter, all of this information goes over here and it's sort of a metadata. So the terraform.tf state file is typically stored in a version control system or a cloud storage service so that it can be easily shared and accessed by a member of a team. Now, uh, it's a very bad practice to keep the state file in local. Right now, what we are doing is we are keeping it in local and that's a bad practice. But right now, just for learning purpose, I'm showing you this. This should be kept somewhere in any sort of SCM so that if tomorrow it gets deleted in from your system, there would be uh, there would be an issue with the team because you won't be able to get it back. Okay, so the Terraform, uh, you have to store it over somewhere. Uh, so yeah, this file basically uh, contains information about the current state of the infrastructure. So current state, which is this, and remember these keywords, current state, because this will help you a lot in the interviews when they ask like, what do we, why do we need Terraform state file? current state of the infrastructure, including the resources that have been created, their configuration or any dependencies between them. So if there are three resources, resources created, the, if there is any dependency, all this information will be stored in a state file. This file is used by Terraform to determine what changes need to be made to the infrastructure to bring it into the desired state. So I hope this is clear to you. Why do we need Terraform state file? What exactly is the function? And we are good to go. And let's now understand the third topic. So topic three for today is Terraform state backup file.
Now again, before understanding what is a backup file, I would like to put you in a scenario. Okay. Now consider this person. This person is creating some infrastructure on any cloud. Okay. There could be EC2, there could be S3 bucket, there could be any sort of DB. Okay. This person is get creating it. Now what will happen is once this is done, there would be a state file that gets created and it will contain all the information of all the dependencies and everything related to this infrastructure in this state file. Okay. Now Terraform is basically very smart. So what Terraform will do, it will create a backup file. Now what this backup file contains, let us understand it. So let's run two iteration, iteration one. Okay. So in this iteration, what we have done is we have created three EC2 instances. Okay. Now in this, once we created it, there would be three EC2 instances over here on the AWS and this information will go in the state file. So in the state file, okay, once that happens, now we want to expand and our manager has asked us to create something else, which is three S3 buckets. Now, once we run Terraform apply, it will read the state file. In this state file, it will already read that there are around three EC2 instances already there. And we are going to create three S3 buckets. Okay. So once this is done in the second iteration, what will happen? Three EC2 instances are already there. And now three buckets are already there. Now this state file will be modified. And now it will have information of three EC2 instances and three buckets, basically this. Now this state file, we can call it S dash and we can, we can call it S. Okay. So this has been modified. Now tomorrow this gets deleted. Okay. Or lost or once you are running uh, this iteration to something happens, something can, uh, something can like, and this can be a very good interview question. Something, what exactly is this something is network issues. Okay. And communication issues or uh, uh, the area goes down. Uh, the a availability zone goes down that that can happen or any unplanned activity that happens. So what will happen? This will be stopped. This whole thing will be stopped. And once it's stopped, it will go into a lock mode or sometime what can happen? It will destroy something. So at this moment, every time you do an iteration, there would be a backup file gets that's get created. So if this, this is iteration one, this is iteration two and iteration three, what will happen is every time a new state file gets created or updated, but in a Terraform state file backup, what will happen? Uh, let me create it again. So this is your uh, iteration one. This is your iteration two and this is your iteration three. This is Terraform state file and this is Terraform backup file. Okay. If this is kind of slow for you, you can uh, run it in 1.5 X with every iteration, something new will happen and it gets created so on and so forth. But in order to mitigate the risk, what will happen is this backup file will have the previous version. So this will be there as a backup file and this will be there as a backup file. So for the previous state is why we need a Terraform backup file. So now if I have to define it, terraforms.tf state dot backup is a backup created by Terraform that contains a copy of the previous state of the infrastructure. And that is the answer to the question. Previous state. So previous state, 
When Terraform makes changes to the infrastructure, it updates it updates the terraform.tf state file to reflect the new state of the infrastructure. However, sometimes unexpected issues can arise during this process, which I was talking about, such as a failure in the communication or infrastructure provider, which can result in corruption or loss of the Terraform state file. To prevent this data loss, Terraform creates a backup file called terraform.tf state.backup, which contains a copy of the previous state of the infrastructure. If the main terraform.tf state file becomes corrupted or lost, this backup file can be used to restore the previous state of the infrastructure and prevent any unexpected behavior. It's important to note that the terraform state backup file should not be used as a substitute, should not be used. That's not a good practice, not be used as a substitute for proper backups. This is uh, not recommended. Okay, this backup file is only meant to provide a temporary solution in the event of an issue with the terraform state file. Overall, the terraform.tf state.backup file is used as a fail safe created by Terraform to help ensure the reliability of the infrastructure management process. And that's how it works, folks. So uh, I hope you have understood these, the importance of these three files and why do we need them? Why do, why, why do they appear in the code when, I, when, when we create any infrastructure? And still, if you have any question, feel free to comment below and we will address that. So thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.